My first question to you, what's the next big change that you anticipate in the Indian stock markets, in the Indian financial landscape? And what are you doing about to sort of reassert your dominance? In the Indian markets, there's always abundant uh, things to do in terms of growth and expansion. So I truly believe that uh, several areas which will be of significant economic impact and value will emerge. They are beginning to emerge. One is around fixed income. The second is around the SME. And I think uh, innovation in product, ability to reach out to mass customers, these will make a huge difference in what the markets can provide as value in both of these segments. We have seen a significant increase in retail participation through the mutual fund route. But it's also a fact that you've seen brokers finding an extremely challenging time. What is the NSE doing to ensure that direct participation into the markets increases? In fact, uh, this is something that we have been uh, focused on for many years now. Mm. And I would say that one of the real game changers around retail participation into the markets, you of course said direct, but I would like to stress that in India we've seen indirect retail participation come in in a big way only with the recent policy of EPFO participation in the markets. And that has an ability to be a significant game changer for the retail savings that will come into the markets. Uh, with that comes a lot of awareness and interest in market products which we can take to the small saver. ETFs have been the big products that we have been pioneering and focused on over the last decade. The fact that EPFO is starting to invest in the market through ETFs is again a huge endorsement that this is the appropriate mass product for a small saver, passive investment vehicle, low cost. So we'll really put a lot of efforts and we continue to put those efforts around making ETFs a household uh, accessible product. Second, we will, uh, you know, as you're aware, even mutual funds today, for example, the exchanges have started providing a distribution platform. Sure. You know, end of the day, it is about market infrastructure like us being able to leverage the huge infrastructure that has been created to create inclusion in not just investors, but also in intermediaries. So people like agents who have been servicing financial products over the years, it should be a way of embracing them into the ecosystem sure. and therefore reach the ultimate uh, you know, retail savers that you want to reach. There is a global debate about high-frequency trading, algo trading, and we realize about 40% of total volume happens through algo trading in India. And you're, you're, you're a pretty dominant player. You control most of it. There is a view, ma'am, that uh, it is, in a sense, driving away small investors. Uh, what's, what's your take on the, the entire debate? So there is a place... Uh, and need for ensuring that small savers and small savings come into the market. And I think we can never take that argument away, especially in a country like India, where it is a strength of our markets that we have a strong retail base and we have to build on that base. So on one hand, you have to develop mass products like ETF, mutual funds, etc., which are appropriate for the small saver and bring him into the markets. Yeah. Increased participation of this variety anyway will bring the small savers into the market. But having said that, today all markets across the world have diverse participation. I would say that the success of any infrastructure is that you must be able to provide a multitude of access. It will be algo, it will be non-algo, it will be intermediated, sometimes it will be non-intermediated. So an infrastructure's success and job is to be able to ensure that it is not driving anyone away. Do it you, opens up the access to all. Sure. Do you, uh, do you have a view on an investor association asking the regulator to reconsider its plan to slow down algo trading? Is there merit in this argument? You know, I don't think we should look at each and every, uh, you know, suggestion in that fashion. Because right. ultimately the regulator has a very broad perspective of where they want to see the markets go. This is something that worldwide regulators are looking at. And frankly, they're all looking at it from a positive policy perspective of what will deepen and expand our markets. So I don't think we should get into particular suggestions. End of the day, regulators across the world and in India continue to engage with the market to see how to develop the market. And I think we have to be empathetic to whatever those requirements are. If you look at Indian companies at this point in time, which sectors are you uh, hoping would be accessing capital markets? Now, where are the areas of growth for you? And secondly, uh, from an institutional fund flow standpoint, what's your own understanding of how markets are positioned? So 
uh, when you talk of sectors, you know, I will nuance that little, little differently. Uh, the last uh, year, for example, if you see, several new assets have been coming into the market, have come to market to raise capital. What is interesting about this uh, story is that this time around, it is a healthy number of mid-sized companies that are actually coming to the market and able to raise capital. This is in some way proof of the pudding that uh, it's not just for the billion dollar raisings that markets are for. It is for strong assets that will get created in the mid-sized range as well. Similarly, the fact of you know, focus on what we can do for SMEs is really going to be the huge focus going forward. If you talk therefore about sectors, I would say more than sectors, we must think about size of offerings and we must think about the kind of instruments that come to the market. So we no longer talk about only equity. We really talk about equity, but different kinds of debt instruments as well, where the market should be able to meet the requirements of different raisers of capital. Uh, from a fund flow perspective, do you believe that India will continue to attract the kind of investment that it's getting from foreign investors? Definitely, every conversation that we have with foreign institutional investors at this point, uh, India is very much an attractive uh, destination that they look at. In fact, uh, you know, I don't know if you saw the, um, while this is about the underlying capital, but if you look at India per se and Indian markets and how much attention that is grabbing, if you look at the last WFE IOMA derivative market survey, uh, if you look at index options, just an example, Nifty options, 59% of total global derivative market turnover comes from Asia PAC. And interestingly, 36% comes from India, NSE. So why this is important is India is no longer a small piece in the total global uh, market turnover piece. India is a significant piece. And uh, India was the destination, NSE was the exchange that accounted for the, one of the top growths in the market expansion in the last year. This gives us a sense that Indian markets continue to be a strong source of you know, uh, interest and an attractive destination for uh, institutional investors across the world.